Hi, I'm super excited about this video blog today. I've got some great news and research to share. Today, I'm discussing changing the gut bacteria, or what we refer to as the gut microbiome, the microbiota, and why it's taking center stage in autism research at the moment. But before I do, I'd just like to backtrack just briefly and fill in some of the blanks for you know, maybe those that are watching my video blogs for the very first time. In a previous video blog, I actually discussed dietary fiber and how it affects the microbiome. And in that blog, we saw how on a low fiber diet, we actually lose a lot of the diversity of our gut bacteria. And some of that diversity, we actually lose forever. And with each subsequent generation of offspring, even more bacteria is lost from the gut. The research is clearly confirming that autistic children have a decreased bacterial diversity in their gut compared to other children. This journal article published in, uh, in 2000 um, looked at the short-term benefit of oral vancomycin in autism. And it was an eight-week study of oral vancomycin, which is a non-absorbable antibiotic, which acts only in the gut. And what they found, it actually led to major improvements in both gastrointestinal symptoms and autism symptoms as well. To the disappointment of parents, unfortunately, the benefits were lost within a few weeks after actually stopping the, uh, the vancomycin. So we know that autistic children have reduced bacterial diversity in the gut, which may be due to their restricted eating habits and low fiber in their, in their diet. And treating the gut with an antibiotic like vancomycin can produce major improvements in autistic children. So what would happen if we were able to restore the diversity of the gut microbiome in autistic children? And how would we actually do this? So it's time to introduce Professor Thomas Borody. Thomas Borody is a Sydney-based gastroenterologist who introduced microbial transfer therapy, MTT, in 1987. So this is 32 years ago now. This is where the microbiome from a healthy volunteer is transplanted into an individual suffering from treatment-resistant clostridial difficile infection in their gut a particularly nasty gut, uh, uh, gut bug. And I am old enough to remember him being seen as a bit of a quack with what he was doing in those early years. But he was getting very, uh, very high success rates in, uh, in patients with Clostridium difficile infection who were resistant to conventional medical treatment. And that couldn't be ignored. Like he was getting a 90% success rate in his patients, uh, which was phenomenal. So he persisted and his treatment is now not only an accepted treatment for clostridial difficile infection and other gastrointestinal disorders, but the therapy is now being trialled in diabetes patients as well. More recently, microbial transfer therapy has been trialled in autistic children. So this study in, uh, was published in 2017. And the reason for the study was that it was done because there are many autistic children and adults that experience significant gastrointestinal symptoms and complaints like abdominal pain or discomfort, constipation, diarrhea, or alternating constipation and diarrhea. And they clearly relate to the severity of uh, autistic symptoms. So the study actually recruited 18 children with autism and their ages were between seven and 16 years who had moderate or severe gastrointestinal complaints, which included things like abdominal pain, reflux, indigestion, diarrhea, constipation, or alternating constipation and diarrhea. Now, I'm not going to bore you with the details of how they did it. If, interest, if you're interested, the full article is available to download off the internet. But most importantly, Professor Thomas uh, Borody was actually involved in the study. Uh, so they were actually in very, very good hands here. And there was a hell of a lot of data that was generated and, and published as well. So all of the autistic participants uh, completed the 18-week uh, treatment study. So there was 10 weeks of treatment um, and uh, there was an eight-week follow-up uh, as well afterwards. So the gastrointestinal symptoms uh, significantly improved for abdominal pain, indigestion, diarrhea and constipation as well. The gastrointestinal symptoms score dropped 82% from the beginning to the end of the treatment, uh, of, which was 10 weeks, and remained um, uh, improved even eight weeks after the, the uh, treatment stopped. And only two of the 18 children 
um, achieved less than a 50% reduction in the average uh, gastrointestinal symptom score. And 50% uh, reduction was a cutoff for improvement and uh, with, they were designated as non-responders. So they, it's not that they didn't um, uh, respond, but they didn't uh, respond up to the 50% mark, which, they, um, uh, which was the cutoff uh, for success in the study. But the interesting thing is that they also decided to look at changes to the core symptoms of uh, autism in these children. And, and what they found was actually very interesting. So they looked at the, um, the CAR score, which rates core autistic symptoms. And what they found, it actually decreased by 20% in that 18-week uh, uh, period. And also the SRS scores, which assesses uh, social skills uh, deficits, uh, also decreased. The ABC score, which evaluates irritability, hyperactivity, lethargy, stereotypy and aberrant uh, speech, uh, uh, also improved as well. And a score which evaluates the adaptive behaviours such as communication, daily living skills and socialisation found that the average developmental age actually increased by 1.4 years in 18 weeks. So autistic behaviours uh, correlate directly with the severity of gastrointestinal symptoms. And behaviours can be altered via microbial transfer therapy it seems. The, the microbial transfer therapy treatments were generally well tolerated with only temporary adverse effects and uh, they were primarily mild to moderate hyperactivity and tantrums uh, and aggression and that was just at the beginning at the beginning of treatment and there were no major changes in blood chemistry or long-term ad uh, adverse effects uh, noted. Now this is a study that was just um, uh, released uh, this year and it was actually a follow-up to the study that we've just uh, been talking about. And the reason that it was actually done was because as one of the study authors, uh, Dr. Adams uh, states, we only conducted the long-term follow-up study after several, several families told us that their child was continuing, continuing to improve significantly. And when they actually did the study, what they found was that with the severity of the, of the um, symptoms of these children, that they actually continue to improve after that 18 week period. So two years later, they are still improving. And the clinical diagnosis of, uh, of autism also improved. So after that 18 week period, two years later, they were still improving. That, that's amazing. And as he says, it's very unusual to see steady gradual improvement after the conclusion of any treatment. So the study originally found a 45% reduction in core autism symptoms, language, social interaction and behaviour post-treatment compared to uh, before treatment. And two years later, the children are doing even better, which is just amazing. And every family completed the study and every family returned two years later for a follow-up evaluation. And that's actually quite unusual for a study because usually uh, you lose study participants that don't come back and so forth. But everybody here was still on board with, uh, with what they were doing. Um, and this, so the study evaluation revealed a 45% decrease in uh, autistic symptoms compared to baseline uh, in that first study. So <coughs> let's put this into perspective what's going on here. At the start of the study, 83% of participants were rated as severe autism. At the end of the uh, two-year study, only 17% were considered to be severe. 39% were mild to moderate. 44% were below the cutoff for mild ASD. Think about that for a second. Yeah, at the start of the study, 83% of participants were rated as severely autistic. At the end of two years, only 17% were considered to be severe. Like, these are amazing numbers and statistics uh, that we can't ignore and we need to take, uh, take note of. And as Professor Thomas Borody actually um, is quoted as saying, this is a world first that when we treated the gut bacteria in these children during our clinical trial two years ago to reset their bi microbiome with fecal microbial transfer, positive results were still being continued to be improving two years from the original treatments. I would call it the highest improvement in a cohort that anyone has achieved for autism symptoms. So think about it. 
What therapy that we currently have for treating autistic individuals can have such a dramatic effect, not only initially improving our children, but continues to do so two, two years later? Yes, there are still a lot of questions we need answered. Yeah, look, what about the children with, uh, without any gut, gut issues? But this is very promising for at least a subset of uh, children with gut issues. And there are a lot of children with gut issues that are on the spectrum. Can you imagine if these results were reported with a pharmaceutical drug? It would be all over the news. Companies would be set up and floated on the stock exchange and literally millions of dollars would be invested overnight. But seriously, to those parents that have been criticized that, look, you are crazy for putting your child on these um, alternative diets. Yeah, you're gonna, you're gonna uh, harm your child. These studies, although more is needed to be done to verify them, you look, confirm that, look, what you have been doing to heal your child's gut with diet, uh, nutritious high fiber foods, fermented vegetables, um, to get that good bacteria into their child, your child's gut, supplements like prebiotics and so forth, yeah, it's absolutely key to helping your child um, uh, improve. And you should feel very proud to be a trailblazer and have led the way like Professor Thomas Borody and his microbial transfer therapy. And to those parents not doing any dietary intervention so far, look, you shouldn't feel guilty that perhaps you should have done more. You know, we know that it's, it's not easy being a, a, a parent on this journey with an autistic child. And it's often confusing for, to parents to work out what to do. But it's not too late to start with diet. Any improvement in nutrition and diet has to benefit your child in, in the long term. Yes, you won't see you know, those improvements the next day when you start. But dietary studies, you know, they've been done uh, over the years and show that up to 70% of autistic children, they actually improve with diet. Improvements are often measured in months and years. Even in this study, improvements were still being seen two years later. But parents need to support each other, just like I was supported when my son was growing up. Together we can make a difference to the current and next generation of children with autism. And there are practitioners like myself that can help guide you. Get in touch with them if you need help on this journey. And as usual, I encourage you to leave your uh, comments below um, and please share to help get the message out there, especially to the parents that are struggling every day with their children. And thank you very much for listening.